Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to install and start using EJS, which stands for Embedded JavaScript Templates. In our first step we're going to look at an express method that will respond and send a response. Thus far we've only used response.send and what this does is it resends just this raw data. Now one thing that we can do that we, we have the option of doing is sending H, putting HTML right here if we wanted to. So like let's look at this username. user slash slash username. Instead of just sending a template right here, we could send, um, let's do, let's do a div or a p tag, or let's send an h1. h1, username there, h1, now let's give it a go, users slash username. Oh, I didn't start the server. Fresh, and you can see that it's now an H1. And we could go even further with that. We could, um, I don't know, you could put it in an ordered list or something. Ordered list, and then make this a list item. Refresh our page, and now we have an ordered list. So you can see that we can send raw HTML if we want to using send. However, this is obviously not a good idea. It's not sustainable. It would make our files just massive and terrible and awful. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use response.render. So response.render, and instead of passing in raw HTML or text data or something like that, we're going to pass in a string that's a file name. So we'll call this users, their username, dot EJS. Now EJS, as I'm sure you've already figured out, stands for the Embedded JavaScript Templates, and that's the templating engine that, that we are going to use. The way this works with Express is that you have to make a views directory. So let's make directory views, and inside of views we're going to make touch views slash username, EJS. So inside of views I now have this username.ejs file and inside of here I can just put my HTML head, put a title of my title body, just put a, a div, inside of there we'll put an h1 that says my username is and underneath that, we'll just put a p tag that we'll leave blank for now because we haven't figured out how to attach our data to that yet. So now that we have this, we're looking in our app.js, and whenever we go to users slash username, it will render username.ejs. Now, this the name of this directory views is important. It has to be views. For the vast majority of things in JavaScript, you can name stuff whatever you want. However, Express is hard-coded to look for a views directory. You can change this, this um, but nobody does. Okay, so if, if you have a valid reason to change it, there's you can look up the documentation to do that, but nobody does. I've never seen it called anything other than views in my life. So you have a views directory, and inside of here you dump all of your templates. Um, in this case, we've just created one called username. So if I go to user slash username, it should render that template. So let's restart our server. And go to user slash username, refresh. Uh-oh, cannot find module EJS. That's normal. That's expected because we haven't told Express to do anything yet. We haven't installed EJS. We haven't um, set it up or anything like that. So we have to stop our server npm i ejs so npm install ejs now that that's done let's try it again no daemon app.js it's running let's refresh there we go works like a charm so inside of the views directory is where we made our template and inside of the template is where we put our html 
But right now, this only sends static pages still. That's not really acceptable. So let's make, instead of users, let's go ahead and make a, a, a products. I like this products one. So slash products slash ID. So instead of res.send, we're going to res.render. Let's res.render products.ejs. Now we have not created this file yet. So inside of views, stop our server, touch views slash products.ejs. And HTML, oops, I'm used to Atom. By the way, I normally code all of my um, templates and everything in Atom and then copy paste them in here just because it, it makes life a lot easier. I just haven't done that yet. So add the head title, products, add body, and then we're just going to do an h1 that has the product name, and what it's going to end up being, that's no daemon, app.js, and go to slash products, and then whatever the product ID is, the product's right there. So that's the same thing we just did, except we're just doing it with a different route and a different template. So now we know how that we can get different templates based on the route. So we have users slash username, which renders the username template. We have products slash ID, which renders the products template. So let's say we had a bunch of products. We are a pet store. We sell dog stuff, dog food and chew toys and treats and things like that. Option number one, the bad way to do this, would be to create a bunch of different routes. App.get slash products slash chew toy. Chew toy number one. And then build that out and then chew toy number two, number three. That's terrible. Don't do that. That's a ton of repetition. That's not dry code. That would take you forever. You'd never be able to sustain it. That's why we're using these parameters here. So the trick is we have to figure out how to pass information from here into our templates because what's going to happen is we're going to have a database on the back end that we're going to get information from. We're going to get data from our database right up here, get info from database. So you might have a const product equals and then you're just going to query your database. So we might have an object is returned from the database that might have name of chew toy might have a price of um, $4.99. That's, that's fine for now. So let's say that we queried our database and we got back this object called product. Now how do we get product, this information, into our template, number one, and number two, inside of our template, how do we tell the template, hey, use the, the data that's being passed in? Step one of that is to pass in the data to products.ejs, and that's actually very simple. Inside of res.render, you pass a second argument, comma, and that argument is an object that just has a key value pair of what you want. So um, product is product. The inside, because it's just an object, inside of our template, we can access this on products, on product. We can call this item if we wanted to kind of make it a little bit more clear, a little bit more understandable. Inside of products here, the template, we would use item. And we're passing in this information, if that makes sense. This is something that, that took me a minute to understand the first time, um, just because it's a little confusing. But once you start actually doing it, it makes perfect sense. So we're going to have item, and it's passing in the information that we've retrieved from our database. So if we save, it'll refresh, and this will work perfectly fine. Nothing is wrong, nothing will change, it won't throw any errors. So we're passing in this information, but we're never actually using it here. We're never actually doing anything with it. So now that we've been able to um, pass the information in, we have to update our template to actually use that information. So let's we can go back to EJS and look at the docs for that. You see already you've got some hints of what it's going to look like. EJS has several different tags that you can use. The vast majority of the time, you're going to be using this one 
and this one. These are the ones that are most commonly used. It's an open um, caret, just like an HTML tag, followed by the percentage sign. And it is, it's the same to close it. So let's look at that. So instead of product name, let's, or after product name, let's add a colon, and then open percent, percent close, and then here you would put item dot name. The reason it's item.name is because we're passing it in with the key of item, and then it has that that has two properties, name and price. So let's go back here and save this. And I can already tell you this is not going to work like you think it is. Okay, just be aware that this isn't going to work right. Refresh still works, but it, it didn't actually put anything in there. That's because we need the equal sign. Outputs the value into the template. That's what we want. That outputs the value into the template. Currently, we have this one, which is a scriptlet tag for control flow no output. So it's not outputting anything. Instead, if we put an equal sign there, save, refresh this page, we now it shows up. Product name is ChewToy. And that's the name ChewToy is not anywhere on our template. That is coming directly from our app.js from right here. If we update this to ChewToy number two, refresh our page after our server restarts and now that's been updated. This is the cool part because this information can be dynamic. This can be coming from a database and it can be different every time we get it. We can do we can use anything on here that's passed in. So if we wanted to add a p tag that says price of percent equals item dot price. Refresh, and now we have the 499 price tag. Anything inside of these tags is treated as JavaScript, and we can do JavaScript stuff with it. So let's say the item.price plus one. Refresh, 599. So we can run JavaScript functions and functionality on things inside of these tags. So that's just something to keep in mind. You won't generally do this too much, but it is something that will come up from time to time, and it is useful. And we can pass as much data in here as we want. All we have to do is just use key, key value pairs. Right now I just have an item, but let's say that I had an item and I also had comments. Comments are um, comments, whatever. And then I've made my comments up here. And instead of an ob object, that would probably be an array. So the first comment would be, this is awesome. If I could help, if I could spell. I love this toy. My dog hated it. So now we have an array of comments. Inside of our template, we can access those comments. So after the P tag, we might put an H3 that says user reviews. Then underneath that, we could do an unordered list. And inside of that unordered list, we want to get each of those comments. So inside of EJS, we're going to use scriptlet tags, which gives us control flow, but no output. So what that means is that we can use other JavaScript stuff, like for loops, or even for each loops. I'm just going to do a for loop this time, just to demonstrate it. But later on, we'll be using for each and everything else. So for let i equal zero, i is less than comments dot length, i plus plus, open, close those. The catch with this templating is that you have to put these tags on each line. So, percent there and there. So now we have this stuff, and inside of here, we're going to put our HTML. So for each one there, we're going to do a list item. And that list item is going to be comments i. Save and refresh, see if this works. There it goes. Now I know this may be confusing. That's perfectly fine, it's a new concept. We're going to get into it, but the main the main idea behind it is that this is just vanilla JavaScript. This is just a for loop. 
There's nothing special about it at all. It's using a variable right here, comments, that was passed in from our app.js. Comments is right there. We enclose the control part, in other words, the part that we don't want to actually display on the screen, in the scriptlet tags, which don't have the equal sign. So anything you don't want displayed on the screen, you're almost always going to use those scriptlet tags. And anything that we do want displayed on the screen, we're going to use the equal sign, or more accurately, anything we do want embedded into the actual um, HTML. Because what this is doing is the template is looking at this and saying, okay, this is not this is a scriptlet tag. This is not something that we should embed into the HTML. We're just going to read this as JavaScript. And it says, okay, so we want to do this three times because there's three items in comments. So whatever's inside of here, we're going to do three times. And what's inside of here is an LI. So we want three LIs. And inside of those three LIs, we want all of the comments. The reason why we actually want those there is because we have that equal sign. That equal sign tells EJS, hey, actually put this stuff into the HTML. It needs to actually be entered and embedded into the HTML, while these just say, hey, don't put this in the HTML, just use it for control and for logic. This is an extremely important concept that we're going to be using constantly from here on, these whole, this whole templating thing. It is extremely important. It is very, very, very important. I've stressed that. I'm going to continue to stress it. Very important. The two main types of script tags we'll be using are the one, the scriptlet tags, which don't have the equal sign, and then what do they call them? The output. Outputs the value into the template. So with, with the equal sign. So without equal sign means don't actually put this in the template. With equal sign means do put it in the template. Depending on what functionality you want for your application, you're probably going to have to use, um, so you may have to use some of these others, um, but generally speaking, those are the two you're going to use. So to do a, a quick summary of what we learned in this video, we learned that we can use external files to build templates for our applications. Those have to be inside the views directory. The views directory needs to be in the root directory of your application. In other words, it needs to be a sibling to app.js or wherever your uh, main file is. Inside of views, you put EJS templates. Inside of your app.js, you use res.render instead of res.send. Res.render, and the only thing you pass in is the name of that file. So for example, here it's username.ejs. Down here it's products.ejs. We also learned how we can embed JavaScript inside of our templates. We're going to use scriptlet tags for things that we don't want displayed to the screen or embedded into the HTML. And we use the equal sign tags for things that we do want embedded into the HTML. And finally, we learned how to pass information from our server-side JavaScript to the template by passing an object as the second argument in the render method call. It just has key value pairs. The key here is what is how you will access it inside of the template. So for example, the uh, render method here has the item key and the comments key, and inside here we have item.name, item.price for item, and then comments. We can change that if we wanted to. We can make it whatever we wanted. That's just what we chose. The key is how you reference it inside your template. The value is the actual value of that reference. So product there and comments here. And generally speaking, this stuff will come from databases or for it from APIs sometimes. I mentioned that this is very, very important, and you need to understand this concept. If you're still fuzzy on it, go back, rewatch the video, do this on your own, play around with it, read the EJS docs, ask questions. Please let me know if you have questions. This is very important, and you need to get this down. We're going to practice it a lot. You're going to get a ton of practice with it, because like I said, we're going to be using it constantly from here on out. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll be happy to help. Thanks.